I'm from Denton, Texas, and there's a band from Denton that makes an appearance in this show, and they can be seen on the shirt worn by Mr. Trent Krim in the final frames of episode six. So James, I gotta know, who do we have to thank for Trent's Midlake shirt? We have James Lance to thank for that. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh, you got something in that you like. Yeah. I um I have this sort of t-shirt journey as Trent Krim. And um, but I Midlake played at the Roundhouse um whilst I was shooting the season three. And I was right down at the front, and this gig was so phenomenal. I mean, truly beautiful gig. Yeah. And afterwards I bought I bought the vinyl, I bought two t-shirts, one for my buddy and one for me. And I decided in that gig that Trent Krim would definitely be a Midlake fan. So I... Did you meet them at the merch desk? Were they there? Yeah, there's a funny story to this. So I got them to sign my um, T-shirt. vinyl. Oh, yeah. And uh, one of them said, hey, uh, you're, um, you're you're that guy, um, Chris, uh, you're that Chris so-and-so from... Uh, they thought I was from some other magazine. And I said, <laughs> and I said no, um, no, that's not me. And then I w- went on. Actually, this is a bit of a long tale. Yeah. Long story Please short, go. well, I don't know how much time you've got, but I don't want to take it up. Long story short, the, I um, I actually donated to something that, 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 for the drummer's son, who's not very well that night. And at the end of it, there was an email that just said, if you have any questions or anything, and I just sent this email saying, hey, you guys are amazing. No questions, of course. I just want to let you know you guys are amazing. But then that guy, the drummer, wrote to me off that because he received it and said, hey, man, we, we we were laughing because we found out that you went and signed the thing. And actually, afterwards, they realized that you were Trent Krim, but the lead singer thought you were a different journalist. Etc. 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 So we, I'm now in touch with them, and uh, but I said to the costume designer, um, I, I really want to wear this T-shirt in in the show, and she was like, Yeah, and we got it through, and then it was the perfect moment for it. So Kudos I was really... on your acting that they thought you were a real journalist. Yes, <laughs> they, did. they didn't realize. So that was kind of cool. There's a long Very tale, cool. but yeah, that did happen. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. To kind of switch gears a little bit, one one aspect that I really love about Ted Lasso is how every character, including Higgins and Trent, have their own way of sharing wisdom with others and passing down their perspective to others. We mm. see the, the great combos between Trent and Colin and Higgins and Will. And if and if Colin and Will paired up with another character, the, the takeaways would be likely be entirely different. Yeah. So I'm curious if you if you thought about that and the kind of poetic nature Trent and Higgins have as characters. I think the show is very uh, smart at just sort of pairing uh, characters together. I mean, like in the second season, I'd never done a scene, like a two-hander scene with Phil Dunster as uh, Jamie Tart. Uh, and you know that had its own quality you know as you always will get when you pair uh, two people or you, something unique will happen um and and i i loved my takeaway from the 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 scenes with will is that uh as the gig begins uh you know higgins goes on to to sort of you know goes to tell will a story and will's already into the jazz within seconds yeah. And so he appreciates that. And so that's, you know, job done. So I love, th- I love those kind of things. Yeah. Mm, mm. Um, well, I think, you know, you could kind of put any of these characters together. They're all so rounded and they've got so many different kind of uh, dimensions and facets to them that it would just, you, any kind of combination would be fun. I mean, I, I didn't really get, I, I got one tiny little scene to do with Keeley actually. Um, mm-hmm. And that was, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, uh, just all of them. I mean, I'd love to, as Trent, I'd love to be play with any of, uh, of them out there. Yeah. What, what I love about the sequence, primarily between Trent and Colin, is that it kind of captures this truth that we all, you know, encounter at some point in our life where we're, we may be dealing with a lot of things or we're, we're hiding, shielding ourselves. And we'll just kind of connect with a stranger. Uh, Trent, Trent and Colin are not complete strangers, but they haven't been able to like know each other like they do after that moment. And so, if I may ask, what have been like some of the most meaningful encounters that you've had with strangers like that? Oh, they'd be completely un. Uh, I wouldn't be able to mention those here. 
<laughs> it's just us. <laughs> um, no, but I think, yeah, you're talking about a little bit about the kindness of strangers and, and sometimes yeah. that sort of anonymity can really help to o open someone up, you know, in a way. Um, I'm just trying to think, my goodness. I mean, oh, I don't know. I mean, um, I, can't, I'm, I'm, I don't know what moments in my life. <laughs> Um, I tell you one little moment. This is like a tiny moment. I was walking down Fifth Avenue once and David Bowie was walking towards me down, oh my uh, goodness, down, down, down Fifth, Fifth Avenue. Avenue. And oh. I was with my, anyway, I was with my girlfriend at the time and I saw him and my arm just sort of went <gasps> like that and he clocked it. And as he walked towards me, he just, he was smoking a cigarette and he kind of just went, <sighs> just gave me a <laughs> smile. And it was just this connection of just, that made me feel so like oh my goodness connected you know what i mean with somebody's just wow. so wonderful that kind of saw me for a second and and you know that's a powerful thing that was a nice moment with a stranger wow I was, you gonna top that? I, uh, yeah i know difficult to top that one i've uh, i've been to um well, well when uh, um not recently but i i used to be in a men's group and i used to go to some uh you know the odd sort of day or weekend i remember this um this uh irish guy from dublin saying that you know one of the things that makes us unique is that you know at night we can look up and and through our eyes acknowledge the stars and uh i know that sounds you know he said if it wasn't for these we wouldn't know that what's out there you know and i just i know it sounds a bit, possibly a little bit basic but it was just sort of it's just a, such a magical thing to say mm. you know I, it's always stayed with me yeah well, I, I know we're just about out of time, and so I'll close by asking about this one specific moment that happens toward the end of episode six, in addition to the Mid Lake shirt, is we get this quote where it's like, you know, the, uh, Ted Lasso's kind of has this new playbook, so to speak, and he talks about like how important it is to kind of throw out the, the real playbook and kind of follow your gut. And so I, I'm curious, what's the, the, you know, the balance of, you know, incorporating your techniques that have been passed on to you for acting or crafting your characters versus kind of going with your gut and not trying to put too much thought into your approaches to moments, like keeping the pressures allow, uh, out and allowing naturalism to take over. Oh, wow. That's a great question. I mean, yeah, you know, there, I guess you pick up things from you know, um, observing and experiencing other performers and directors and all the other all, all the other people. So you kind of gather this sort of toolbox and stuff. But in a way, you do need to just sort of completely forget about it in order to be present in the moment. And and yeah. and, and possibly the best thing I've ever learned, or uh, I'm continuing to learn, is the best thing to do for me on set is to listen. Really, just to mm, just to listen, yeah, yeah. and then. Um, hmm? Absolutely. <laughs> right, what? Um, to listen and, and then you can respond. Um, if you respond, you know, th th then then you, it's a natural sort of um, delivery, I guess. Well, it gives the scene credibility, doesn't it? It's difficult to differentiate because if you've been around and a while, your gut is informed by your experience. Sure. Uh, you, you, you know, otherwise we'd all be doing. I know. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you know, you 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 have uh, you 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 develop. You know, you 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 develop stuff, and um, that plays its part whether you like it or not. You know, you you have experience, uh, and yeah, naturalism. That's just the right thing to do for the script on that day. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, that's that's the most important thing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your stories and the conversation here. Uh, you have a lot of great work ahead of you both. And so I appreciate it very oh, much. Oh, good. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. You can Thanks. see into the future. Oh, great. We've got some good work ahead of us. Hey.